sometimes when you release these new versions or every version really, are, are benchmarks um, productive or counterproductive for showing the performance of a model? You need them, and and I bet it's important that you don't overfit to them, right? So there shouldn't be the end with a be all and end all. So there's there's LM Arena, or it used to be called Elemsys. That's one of them that turned out sort of organically to be one of the the main ways people like to test these systems. At least the chatbots. Um, obviously, there's loads of academic benchmarks on from from that test uh, mathematics and coding ability, general language ability, science ability, and so on. And then we have our own internal benchmarks that we care about. It's a kind of multi-objective, you know, optimization problem, right? You you don't want to be good at just one thing. We're trying to build general systems that are good across the board, and you try and make no regret uh, improvements. So where you improve yeah. in like you know coding, uh, but it doesn't reduce your performance in other areas, right? So that's the hard part because you you can of course you could put more coding data in, or you could put more um, I don't know gaming data in, but then does it make worse your language? Uh, system or or uh, in, in your translation systems and other things that you care about. So it's you've got to kind of continually monitor this l increasingly larger and larger suite of of benchmarks. And also, there's uh, when you stick them into products, these models. You also care about the direct usage and the direct stats and the signals that you're getting from the end users, whether they're coders or or, or the average person using uh, using the chat interfaces. Yeah, because ultimately you want to measure the usefulness. But it's so hard to convert that into a number right it's, it's really vibe based benchmarks yes. across a large number of users and it's hard to know and I, it would be just terrifying to me to you know you have a much smarter model but it's just something vibe based it's not 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 quite working that's such a scary because and everything you just said it has to be smart and useful across so many domains so you you get super excited because it's all of a sudden solving programming problems it never been able to solve before but now it's crappy at poetry or yes. something and it's just right. i don't know that's a stressful that's so difficult um to because, balance yeah to balance and because you can't really trust the benchmarks mm -hmm. you really have to trust the end users yeah and then other things that are even more esoteric come into play like um you know the style of the persona of the 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 system you know how it you know, is it verbose? Is it succinct? Is it humorous? You know, and and different people like different things. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's very interesting. It's almost like cutting edge part of psychology research or person personality research. You know, I used to do that in my PhD, like five factor personality. What do we actually want our assistants to be like? And different people will like different things as well. So these are all just sort of new problems in product space that I don't think have ever really been tackled before, but um, we're going to sort of ha rapidly have to deal with now. <laughs> I think it's a super fascinating space, developing the character of the thing. Yeah. And in so doing, it puts a mirror to ourselves. What are the kind of things um, that we like? Because prompt engineering allows you to control a lot of those elements, but can the product uh, make it easier for you to uh, control the different flavors of those experiences, the different characters that you interact with? Yeah, exactly.